Hi fellow traders. In this video I'm going to share with you how I come up with my trade plan for the stocks, the gappers that I um, like to trade in the morning. Um, and I guess the best way to describe it is to use the analogy that Kanal likes to use. You know, the same way a lawyer has to build evidence to prove his case. You know, we as traders have to build evidence to prove to ourselves that our thesis is more than likely going to be correct. Um, but the unique thing about the, the stocks, you know, I have to come up with a plan because I don't know how it's going to open. I'm going to have to come up with two different plans. And that's what I do every morning is on these gappers. Out of the gates, I'm going to have to have a plan whether it goes up or plan whether it goes down. And, you know, then from there, I may have to adapt on the fly. I may have to change and come up with a different plan, you know, if none of what I expected to happen happened. So on Friday, um, KR was one of those tickers that hit my gap scan. And when I looked at it, it was about here. Yeah, this it was two red tickers that came, two red candles that printed after this run up when I first looked at it. Um, I like the way the candle looked. I like the run up. You know, like the range it had um, pre market, and it was pulling back. And I like to see that. I like to see tickers pull back but not wash out. Um, so I was hoping it would pull back and consolidate around the VWAP. And that's where I based my trade plan upon uh, what it was going to do with the with the VWAP. You can see pre-market it came up, it tapped the upper deviation band on the VWAP, and you know it started to come back. So what this purple line is, this is the line I put here to mark the higher pre-market, and this is going to help me on my daily chart you know, when I'm drawing my um daily support and resistance lines so from here I like the chart um, so now it's time to start building the case for it so first thing I do is I look at Finviz you know I want to see uh, what the float is okay so this is one strike already I like to trade tickers that have no less I mean no more than a hundred million share float um, also, I like to have trade tickets that has an ATR of over, you know, 150. But I like the chart so much, um, I kind of overlooked this. I was going to wait and see what kind of volume it came in. Um, usually, out of the gates, it may have enough momentum to trade. Even though it's a high float stock, if it's got a lot behind it, um, may get enough move, a, a nice enough move to trade. So even though this didn't look all that great, you know, I still wanted to look at coming up with a plan. Um, and here you go, September 11th. And I'm looking at all of this here. Quarterly profit up. Um, it boosts its forecast. It had earnings come out. So it you know, it was legitimate push up. So it was legitimate news, um, nice catalyst. So I said, well, let me look at, see how it looks on the daily chart. And then we can kind of go from there. Um, this was a level that I'd already drawn. This was a high, you know, it double topped here. Um, I was probably looking at this ticker, you know, sometime back. Um, and this is another daily level here but these aren't even really in the range of where it's trading today so what I start doing is looking for obvious sign areas where it might have hit support like right here on um, the low was 3454 you know and this isn't going to be perfect I'm not going to hit it to the penny I'm going to try to be you know as close as possible And you'll see in a minute how I base my trades off of these levels. 
And what I'm doing, and some people may do it differently than I do it. Um, some people may say, I'm, you know, I don't need all of these levels. These levels don't matter. But they've been working for me. And as long as they work for me and I can make some money, you know, I'm going to keep drawing them the way I've been drawing them. Um, so what, what I've done is I've found, like, levels of consolidation areas. If I've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six tick, um, candles that are within a 10 cent range, you know, I'm going to draw a trend line around that range. You know, that's a, a strong area of um, support right here because it acted as support here, you know, right here. So to me, that's an, a viable level. Um, right here, you know, I've got two candles that came down and tapped this. Um, this is close. Right here, this is where they were consolidating around this area. Um, you know, right here, this was another one. So all of these, you know, I feel pretty confident that these are good levels of um, support and resistance on the daily. So once I map them out, and I kind of like the way the daily chart was because, you know, it was gapping up. It's trying to fill this gap right here from the gap down. And I, I figured, you know, maybe we can make a strong move up. Um, wasn't really sure yet, but I, I had enough to um, come up with my trade plan. So when I got back to this ticker, I think this had, this had printed. Um, so right here, this is telling me I've got a lot of indecision right here. Um, it's what I wanted it to do, consolidate on the VWAP. So the question is, when the ticker opened, is it going to wash out and lose the VWAP? Or is it going to um, fly off the VWAP at open? I didn't know, so I had to. I have to come up with two plans based on what this ticker is going to do. Um, gappers are either going to continue to gap up at open, or they're going to fade and try to close the gap it just made. Uh, so what I'm, I'm just waiting to see right now what is going, how is this ticker going to open. So my my thought process is, if it fades the VWAP. And I get a candle to, to open below the VWAP. I'm going to short it for a move down to here. Now I'm going to look to see if it breaks what it's going to do with this level. But my initial price target is going to be this level right here. Now the other thing it could do is it can hold the VWAP, consolidate in an open pop, and make a run up. And if it does... Um, you know, my profit target is going to be, you know, overhead. Now, the one, so right now, what happened Friday, I had to leave where I was. I wasn't in my office. I wasn't at work, actually. I was on my laptop. So I had to leave and shut down and come back. But I had this plan. Unfortunately, when I got back, it was, this candle was printing here. And you know, I could have chased it down and got 40 cents or so, but that's not how I trade. I don't chase. If I miss my initial move, you know, okay, oh well. Um, I'll just have to catch the next one. So both of my plans for this ticker for the morning was dead. I didn't get to move off the VWAP, so that trade was dead. This trade worked out the way I had planned, but I wasn't able to get the entry that I needed. And I didn't take the trade. So what I did, I looked for it to bounce off this level of support. Because every time I take a reversal trade, and ironically, this ticker was on my reversal scanner at this time. So it was on this support held for this ticker. I went ahead and went long here, risking on this support now let me I'll go back in a minute but I risk this was my risk right here if it closed if I got a candle to close below this support then I was taking the trade off 
because any close below it, my plan is dead. That doesn't mean it's not going to recover and run back. It means my plan is dead and I have to go back and reevaluate the situation. But I got here, got in here long. My profit target on reversals, first target's always the VWAP. So once it made this move up, it caught the VWAP. I put in a sell order and sold it. Now, unlike a lot of other people, I use market orders. Very, very slim chance of any slippage because I'm trading with small share size, anywhere from 200 to 500 shares on average. I may trade 1,000 share lots on smaller dollar tickers, but you know, I always look at level two. I'm always looking to make sure that there are enough sellers at that area before I buy. Or there's enough buyers at that level before I sell. So I could get the price that I want um, or get it in the range that I want to get it in. So I went ahead and I sold here. It did push up a little bit to this um, resistance. It failed this resistance and then it came back. Now this was a good candidate if I was still you know up on I was in another trade and had this been the only trade I was in I definitely would have shorted this when it lost the VWAP and lost these moving averages I definitely would have shorted this but I would have lost I would have got stopped out this is a good example of a perfect setup I've got everything I need to um, support my thesis making lower lows lower highs um, it's fading I just lost the VWAP just lost the 9 just lost the 20 why would this be a good short this is the closest area of, su of support here um, didn't you know luckily I was in Netflix and didn't take it because it would have been a loss it would have come up and Let's see, right here, close above the nine would have stopped me out. And, and I would have lost on that trade. So after I, you know, this trade, it was a decent trade. You know, made some decent money um, for the morning. For a Friday morning anyway. And I came up with another plan. Um, the next plan was to trade off of this. Hopefully it will push this resistance. And this resistance would turn into support, which it tried to do here. And I was looking for a trade from here back up to, you know, high pre-market. Didn't, you know, but then I, when I looked at this volume and we were steady losing, losing volume, it was lunchtime. It was on Friday. There was no way I was going to take this trade. As a matter of fact, um, at lunchtime, after I saw how little volume was left, I pretty much shut it down. So I couldn't really build a case here. You know, here I was looking at the push off this support. But what I looked at, volume was dead. Volume had dried up. And without volume, uh, almost 1 billion tick, 1 billion share short. A 1 billion share float ticker is not going to move very much. And that's exactly what happened. It didn't move very much. So the evidence I found did not support the thesis I had or the trade plan that I had of wanting to trade it off this level, you know, for a push up to this. Um, and th this is an example of how I s established trades in the morning. Establish a plan uh, when my plan doesn't work out or if I miss it I miss an entry I'm going to sit back and look for another entry. I'm going to see if it sets up again Now I knew when I saw this Automatically I would have an opportunity to play the bounce You know it won't be as lucrative as the first trade But it will it was a trade worth trade worth taking the risk reward was good here I am risking on, you know, below this. You know, any close below this, I'd have been out. 
and you know good profit target good risk reward ratio then I looked at this plan here you know here it, it bounced it made a higher low started to push back up got a nice strong candle here um, this candle here good volume and then bam the volume left and these are things that you have to keep in the back of your mind that you have to think about you know when you're trading you know follow the evidence if the evidence does support this trade don't take it the volume didn't support it this is a key piece of evidence and a key piece of information that I use to plan my trades it wasn't there my plan is dead you know plain and simple so I hope I showed you or explained to you how I use it, how I come up with my plans and how I use them and how I can change plans in the middle of the trading day to catch different setups you know I'm still using all the information that I gathered pre-market to continue to look at possible trade opportunities for this ticker later in the day um, it just had too many things going against it if I'm ever trading on Friday after lunch volumes got to be out of the ordinary if not I'm not trading it um, that's my plan I stuck to it and therefore I did I didn't lose any money and what I would recommend is that any trade you take have a plan and the plan can't be follow your guru in a trade because he said he's taking it here and you take it but you don't know where your stops gonna be you don't know what your risk is gonna be and you don't know what your profit targets gonna be you don't have a plan you're gonna lose money you know you may get lucky and hit it once or twice but then you're gonna lose in the end um, when you first starting out when I first started out with my plan I wrote them down I know it took time I know I missed a lot of trades but oh well I was learning I wasn't losing any money you know I knew where I wanted to be I knew what I wanted to do and that's the mentality that's the focus you've got to have um, you're not going to get rich overnight you no know, one in a million may buy a stock that takes off but you know most of us 999,000 999,999 of us are not that lucky so we have to do it the right way and I suggest writing your plan down writing down your entry point what's going to trigger your entry write down your profit target write down your stops and stick to it if your plan if the plan you have fails you take it off because even if the stock goes and does what you want it to do your plan fail so that means you need to go back and reassess your plan how you do your plans so that the next time your plan will succeed you know just look at it that's where studying in, in the you know after the markets closed comes up you know I'm on sometimes I'm on one two o'clock in the morning studying trades trying to figure out how I missed it what could I have done to get in this trade at the right time you know what did I miss something I'm studying charts I'm reading um, I'm watching re-watching webinars that you know that go along with the way I trade I'm doing all of these things so that I can remain profitable and I can keep growing and you know it, it's working out so all I can say is you know have a trading plan and stick to it if you have a plan and you stick to it you're not gonna blow your account up if you lose two or three times in a row then you know your planning is flawed and you need to go back and try to figure out you know what why it's not working that's exactly what I did and that's what's kept me in the game you know even when the market turned 
you know, I was frustrated, but I studied, I tried to figure out why my plans weren't working, what I had to do to change it. I was missing something. And I found it. And it turned my summer around. So I, I hope that what I said made sense. Um, I hope you understand how I do my trades. If you don't and you want to ask me more questions, feel free to email me, uh, catch me on Twitter. You know, I'll be glad to answer them. If you see something that I'm missing or that doesn't make sense that I'm doing, you know, I don't have a problem with you sharing it with me because that's how I learn. So until next time, guys, thanks for listening and uh, stay green.